Welcome back to DTEC. Uh, today's vehicle is going to be this 2021 Infiniti Q50. Now it's got a little bit of an interesting story behind it. This was sent down to me from my friend's shop who bought it with a bad engine. They think it was locked up. So they sourced a used one, but one that was a two-wheel drive. This particular vehicle is a all-wheel or four-wheel drive. But simply, and I do this on BMWs, if I have to sometimes, you have to change and swap over the pan and the pickup, so on and so forth, to make it work. So they installed that motor once they converted it to all-wheel drive. And I think they drove it for maybe a few days, and that one started to basically make a knocking sound. They then sourced a third one installed it and this one does not have any mechanical noises or anything like that but it does throw and continues to throw a code that does not go away that's related to the crankshaft sensor as far as the symptoms obviously check engine light and when it's the first start of the day or after you clear the code it'll start up fine the drive so on and so forth the light will come on but the second time you start it it'll be an extended crank and then it'll start idle and drive. Looked at this last night, and this was the code. So there's 21 Infinity. I'll show you what's stored or the one that we are chasing. So it's a P0335 CKP sensor circuit. They themselves have done some work to try to rectify the issue, and. Uh, I'm assuming they've already replaced the crankshaft sensor, maybe more than once. They even went as far as finding the pins for the crankshaft sensor. So it's a three-wire Hall effect sensor, and they ran their own, basically, bypass harness straight from the pins all the way down to the crankshaft sensor. I think it's somewhere on the bottom of the bell housing area. Everything that they've done is not taking care of the issue that code still returns or it never really goes away and then we continue to have the symptom as you can tell I am tapped in with the scope I want to just firsthand look at the connector of the engine computer meaning from the crankshaft sensor signal all the way up this way to see if the computer is actually receiving a signal from the sensor um, through the whole harness and the sensor itself. And so I want to look at that to begin with and start with that to get basically an electrical data point to see if we are getting a signal. Now just before taking the scope capture, I did come in here and try to see some service information that relates to that uh, trouble code because I just wanted to educate myself and see why the computer itself would be unhappy and throw that trouble code. So as far as what would make it come on is if the crankshaft position sensor signal is not input to the ECM for one second consecutively or while all the following conditions are satisfied, meaning if it's not receiving the sensor signal when the engine is running or at start of engine or if it's not receiving the signal when it is receiving a camshaft position sensor signal which would basically tell the computer that the engine is spinning because it's receiving camshaft sensor signals but none from the crankshaft so those will turn the light on and the trouble code to be logged and another factor that could also make the code come on is basically if the crankshaft sensor signal is inappropriate or partially missing for approximately one second or more, it'll basically turn the code on. So that is telling us that it is receiving a signal, just either maybe inappropriately, meaning incorrectly synced or timed, or possibly that it's a corrupted or a not fully there signal, something that 
is not 100% how it should be, and so it'll log that even though it's receiving some sort of signal. So it's either if it's missing completely, or if it is logged and just not what it's expecting to see when it's receiving it. So now that we've educated ourselves as far as to why that computer will log the code is whether here at this point it does not receive the signal at all while it's cranking or while it's running because it'll receive camshaft sensor signals or if it does receive something it's going to be again a oddball signal that it does not expect to receive while it's cranking or running. So that's why I'm tapped in. I want to get a hardcore, uh, you know, capture of the digital signal and see what it looks like. Now, I have no idea what to expect or what it should look like. All I know is I'm tapped into the signal line. I'm going to start it up, see what we get. Okay, so that was three cranking events, and the first one seemed kind of normal sounding, let's call it. Just this guy here, and then this one, there's the extended crank. So where it's not so solid, right here, here is solid. That's when it sped up, so we finally fired and spun the engine faster. This is just cranking speed. Let's take a look and now this, this looks odd because of the gap. Now I don't know what we're supposed to have, so let's see. And I currently do not have a sink, so that's kind of going to throw me off a little bit, but... There's there's a lot, what looks to be a lot more gaps than should be on the 360 if there's only one gap, which is what I'm used to seeing on most vehicles, they'll have one gap. And by that, I mean this. So we will purposely have a gap, or we should have a gap. That helps identify a, a sync point for the crankshaft sensor and the computer to, to realize where the position the engine is at. But... It looks like we've got multiple gaps. I doubt that from here to here is 360. Um, so that's where a sink would come in and help uh, because it just it looks very odd. And I don't know what we're really truly supposed to have as far as a, a known good. All right, so I set up an ignition sink. Hopefully it'll capture something. Alright, so this is that capture. Now, obviously red is going to be our ignition sink. And you can tell how, see if it's, that part is shorter than this one. And then it goes up there. That's the extended crank. That's when we're not triggering any ignition. And once it fills up towards the top, that means we are now sparking. So you could tell that's extended. That is not extended, but it might be a little bit longer than what a known good vehicle might do. So let's see. So the purpose of getting a sink is to try to figure out our 720 position and looks like this is going to be usable. And you can tell we're capturing just noise from the other ignition. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six back to one. So 
Um, we are definitely capturing a 720 event and there is a crazy number amount of gaps within that section. So let's see. I am going to definitely have to try to find a known good in order to try to make sense of this. But we have a usable um, section now to try to figure out, see what's going on. Now what we can do here is let's build a 360. So let's find 360 first with our rulers. We'll split that in two. So from here to here will be the same spot. And let's try to see if we can find some sort of repetitiveness. So I'm going to count some teeth and then I'll put up on the screen what I found. Alright guys, so quickly, just off screen counted. Uh, this section here we have 18. This one we have 9. This one we have 8. I didn't even bother counting that other section. Um, because right now, that is three different uh, teeth counts. And I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to be that inconsistent. And or have this many gaps. So we got one, two, three, four gaps within 360. So I doubt this is the way it's supposed to be. I'm starting to assume that the tone wheel, that the tone wheel or wherever the pickup signal is um, generated from whether it's on the crankshaft itself or the flywheel uh, I'm wondering if we are either missing teeth or bent teeth or something's going on all right guys so Diag Network actually came through on this one a quick search for the Q50 3.0 known good cam crank actually pulled up a usable known good. Now off camera I did count and look at this one. Um, it looks like there is multiple gaps but not as many as what we have and I counted these two sections. There's 18 teeth there, 18 teeth there and then it looks like it's sections of 18 teeth which we definitely do not have. So this is another clue leading us down to possibly uh, our hypothesis being correct about either bent teeth, missing teeth, broke teeth, something, something to that extent. And so lastly, I got curious, I looked up the part number for the flex plate or flywheel, whatever you want to do it, and it does have three gaps. So it's one that's not as normal where you would have one gap. So here is one gap and then there's another gap and there's another gap and then we go back to the first gap so there's three gaps and then this is the tone wheel teeth not to be confused by the other side of the flywheel that is the starter engagement teeth of the flex plate. So on the back of it is looks like bolted or riveted uh, are these let's call it uh, yeah tone wheel teeth and I did count these off camera and you can guess how many of these we got from gap to gap it's gonna be 18 and it's so it's three section of 18 with the gap and so now we've got enough evidence with one scope capture with a sink that's shown us that we are missing some of these tone wheel teeth and is generating that code that does not go away, which makes sense because it's always getting a signal, but an improper signal that is never correct, and so the code won't go away. All right, guys, so got it jacked up to try to see if I could find the location. And unfortunately, it's not nowhere near the bottom of the bell housing like the older 
um, Nissans or the VQ engines. I thought I might have been able to get away with uh, possibly having access and maybe rectifying or getting a visual. I have done one in the past where I was able to save it and without replacing the engine. So I'll put a link of that up. Uh, it was a similar situation, but this one is probably going to have to end here. I'm going to have to send it to them. Now, the reason why is if I can do this, let's see. There's the pigtail that they made. The connector is right there. It's on the top where the, I don't know if the cowl or the intake something uh, gets in the way. But unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to remove the sensor, spin the engine, look at the teeth, and pull them back if they were bent or whatnot. But I am guaranteeing that is what's going on. I'm going to have to send this to them and have them basically pull the tranny and fix it or just maybe at this point just order a new flex plate.